everyone. Um, I just wanted to do a quick training today on um, doing video walkthroughs as well as um, just some basic etiquette for showing properties. So um, let's jump in on some basic etiquette. Uh, just a heads up when you show up to the property. Um, number one, always follow the instructions in the MLS for showing um, instructions. So if you're supposed to schedule an appointment, please do so. And if the house is vacant and it just says go and show, I usually like to send the agent a courtesy text message just to let them know that I'm going to head to the house to show it and when I'm going to be there, just so they have a heads up. Sometimes plans change. They are supposed to update things in the MLS. They don't do so. So I always just kind of give them a heads up um, just as a courtesy. Um, if you are going to be showing the property just for a video walkthrough or uh, previewing it for clients, let them know that as well. Sometimes that changes um, the outcome of being able to see it or not, or um, just changes how the sellers might prep for it, knowing that they don't have to be gone quite as long or, you know, whatever might take place. So I always let them know if my clients aren't going to be with me during that showing. And oftentimes I let them know, you know, if it's an occupied property that, hey, I'm just doing a quick preview for clients so the sellers don't even have to leave if they don't want to. Um, it's up to them. Um, so I just kind of give them that heads up. For video walkthroughs, why would you do a video walkthrough? Well, let's go back. Let's circle back to the showing etiquette. If you show up to the property for your scheduled appointment and somebody is already there showing the property, just wait politely outside. It's rude to enter into the property when somebody else is showing it. They may have shown up late. They might have gone longer than expected. Maybe the agent allowed you to double book showings. If it was a vacant property and appointments weren't necessary, then who knows what might be there. I've actually showed up to properties that were vacant, that didn't require appointments, that had lines outside waiting for it to be shown. So you just wait your turn, one person in at a time, unless the other agent invites you in. Sometimes, um, like if I'm showing a property and we've already seen the backyard, I might invite them in to go ahead and view the yard or tell them they can go through the side gate and take a peek at the yard while we finish showing the house or vice versa, right? So I always try to help and assist and create good camaraderie between me and the other agents. Um, but I don't invite them in for a showing. After all, I didn't send my clients to an open house. I sent them to a private showing. So I like to keep it that way. Um, oftentimes it's common um, practice that the agent showing the property will actually then lock the house up and put the keys back into the lockbox and allow you to access the lockbox to get those keys back out. The reason they do that is that each of the showings are tracked through that lockbox and now they've shown that they put the keys back and then somebody else accessed the property after they did. So that way the listing agent has record of everybody who accessed that property. Obviously, if it's a combo box, um, they may not do that or some agents may not. They may just ask you to verify your license number or something to make sure they're handing off the keys to a legit person and not somebody impersonating an agent. Um, when you are doing a video showing, um, why might you do a video showing? Your clients may not be in town. You may be showing to out of out of town clients. I've actually um, done video walkthroughs of properties for clients that never actually saw the property before they closed escrow. Sometimes we do virtual showings or video showings as a preview to the property. Um, maybe their range of what they're looking for is kind of big, or maybe they aren't going to be in town until the next weekend, and they're hoping to put one in the contract before they enter into town so they can be there for inspections. Um, or maybe they're just not in the area or not available to show property or see properties. So then we would do a video walkthrough. I try to, well, there's two different types, right? We could do a video that we record. And then we're going to send them a copy of that video. Um, just so you know, if you do it that way, it's best to, um, I usually try to break it into sections of the property, you know, like front yard, neighborhood, um, main living area, kitchen, living room, whatnot, and then maybe bedrooms, and then maybe backyard, and then maybe garage. So I have several smaller videos, or I might do one larger video. Just keep in mind that if you're going to do one larger video, you may want to um, set it up so that you upload it to like YouTube or something and then share the link with them. You can upload it as a private YouTube video so not everybody can see it. And then um, and then you can share that link with them. It's going to be hard to uh, text that showing to them if you are doing that video walkthrough as one large video. So just kind of keep that in mind as well. 
Um, as far as for how you conduct the video walkthrough, we want to be really careful of how we describe the property in the neighborhood so that we don't get accused of steering or block busting, right? So oftentimes I'll make sure that, um, you know, you kind of think about it, like if I'm doing a video of this property, it's a little easier if they're in person, right? Doing a um, virtual walkthrough where they're like live with you versus you taking video and sending it to them because then they can ask questions or, oh, can you show me that a little bit differently? Or can you change the angle versus if you're doing a video, they can't really ask you to change things. So generally what I try to do is I start in the front yard. Um, I usually from the curb, I will show them or video the um, front yard to the front porch area, the driveway, the front of the garage, the side of the house, right? And then I'll also turn around and show them the neighborhood. I don't want to say whether a neighborhood is a good neighborhood or a bad neighborhood. Number one, we aren't allowed to say that. Number two, my definition of what is a good versus a bad neighborhood might be different than my client's definition. And so I want them to be able to see the street that the property is on. What do the other houses look like? What does the street look like? Is Are the sidewalks upkept? You know, what's going on in that neighborhood? So I always try to video that front yard um, street area. And then we enter into the property, right? And then I kind of want to show them the property as you would walk through the property, as you would enter into it, like as a guest. Um, so same way I set up my pictures on my listings, right? Like we're doing a tour. Same thing on my video. I usually start with the common areas, right? Whatever you see kind of as you walk in the door, maybe pan left and right so they can see like if there's rooms on both sides, if there's a long hallway, if you enter into the family room, like what do you see when you walk into that door? And then I usually describe the property as I walk through it and not like, oh my gosh, this property is so cute. It has purple walls and blue ceilings and really cute wallpaper, but more so just like when you walk through the front door, you enter into a kind of a small formal entry area. There's a hall closet here. Let me open that for you so you can see the size of the closet. Looks like they've got several jackets stacked in there, right? And then we close that and then we, you know, maybe walk into the family room and I'm just going to verbally walk through that property with them as they would be seeing it, whether they are a virtual tour or on a recorded video tour. So they're going to get the same experience either way. The only difference, again, between virtual versus recorded is that they're going to be able to ask questions. So at the end of each room, when I finish kind of the family room area, showing them the, the area, I may um, look at the windows and state whether they're single pane or dual pane, right? I may note things that I might see that would be considered material defects as I walk through the property, right? Things they would notice as they were there, like, oh, the carpet looks like it's in pretty decent condition, or there's some big spots on the carpet, right? So I'm going to kind of note that for them because sometimes things don't show up on video like they would in person. So I want to make sure I note that. And if I'm doing a virtual tour, when I finish the room, like if I just finished the family room, I might say, do you have any questions or is there anything else that you wanted to see in that room that you didn't get a good visual of? Right. So I'm just going to ask some more questions and then we're going to continue on to the next room. So, you know, we're just kind of going to work our way through that house. Um, like I said, I normally kind of do the main rooms and then we move into the bedroom area. Some houses have like a wing of bedrooms on one side and a wing on the other. So we just want to make sure that we always identify how you're moving through the property, right? So if we go to the right of the door, as you walk through it, there we have the family room. And as you go straight in from the front door, that enters into the hallway that takes us into the bedrooms, right? The first bedroom on the left is, and the first door on the right is, right? So we're gonna walk them through that way and kind of describe it as we see it. Um, I usually try to think of it as like, if you were describing something, um, maybe not as in detail, but if you were describing something to like a blind person, right? How would you describe that property to them? Or how would you walk them through that property? Now we're going into the living room. Oh, there's a step down into the living room because some of those things don't show up right on the video that you stepped down into the living room or up or 
um, you know, whatever that might be, or that the countertops are only three and a half feet tall versus, you know, like an average four foot tall countertop. So if the countertops are super low in the kitchen or bathrooms or there's holes in the doors or it's pretty beat up or right, like on a video, you can't smell things. So normally like when I do my Avid, I recommend not noting smells, but on a video walkthrough, if you can smell something, you may want to let them know that there's an odor there. They can't smell it through the video. Maybe one day we'll have videos that you can like sense the odor, but um, until then you may want to note like, oh, there's a heavy pet odor, right? You may not want to be like, oh, it smells like cat pee because we're not an expert and we don't know whether it's really cat pee or human pee ultimately. So um, you may just want to note that there's like a heavy like odor or pet odor or urine odor as you walk through the property, whatever that might be. So um, we walk through the house just describing each room to them, asking them if they have any additional questions, if they're doing virtual, if you're recording it, we just kind of keep walking through. And again, oftentimes if I'm doing a video walkthrough, I try to break it into sections. So not like each room, but here's kind of the bedrooms and here's the family room. And I maybe try to keep each video to about a minute or less. And then we pick up another video and continue on. Again, you can do it in one long video. Um, you're just going to have to get it from your phone to another platform where they can view it because you're not going to be able to send them that video directly. Um, so that's kind of the video walkthroughs. Um, when you go into the backyard or when you're outside, um, you know, if there's a loud noise or there's an airplane flying overhead, you may want to note it. Oh yeah, look, so you're note near the Air Force Base. There's, you know, one of the big airplanes from the Air Force Base or um, the neighbor's dog seems unhappy that I'm back here, right? So it's okay to note those things. I mean, obviously if there's a yapping dog, they're probably going to hear it in the video, but in case they don't, you may just want to point it out to them that the neighbor's dog seems unhappy or that the neighbor's dog barked at you a couple of times when you walked out in the backyard, but then they quieted right down once they decide you belong there, right? So little tidbits like that are helpful. You wouldn't want to say, oh my gosh, this neighborhood looks so trashy or this, you know, it's kind of run down. We wouldn't want to make comments like that because again, your definition versus their definition is going to be different. So you just want to make sure you capture that in a video. If I'm doing a video walkthrough of the property and not a live virtual walkthrough where they can actually ask questions and ask to get better details or see further, um, then I'm probably also going to go back through the property and take some additional photos um, just so I have a recollection of what was there and maybe some better photos because sometimes online you don't get full photos of what that room looks like or where the closet was in relation to the door or how a TV would fit in the living room. So things like that. You just kind of want to get maybe some additional photos in case they have more questions. Um, I was trying to think there's anything else that I usually try to note when doing a video walkthrough or a virtual tour. That's, that's really about it. Um, I try to be a little bit more neutral on my video walkthroughs than I am if I do like an in-person walkthrough. If I do an in-person walkthrough, oftentimes um, my humor comes through a lot and, you know, we joke about it and have fun with the house and whatever's going on with it but they're there and they can visually touch and see and, and we can joke about it and have fun together, assuming that that's the type of client that I have. Um, whereas on a video walkthrough, I may not be as joking about it so that they don't accidentally pick up something the wrong way that I'm trying to communicate. Um, so that's kind of my, my rule of thumb for those video walkthroughs or their virtual tours. I've sold properties where people have not seen the property prior to close the escrow. Um, so you just want to make sure you're really detailed and in-depth with that video walkthrough. And um, even if they aren't present on like a virtual walkthrough and you send them over videos, if that's a house they want to put an offer in on, um, I may ask them if there's anything else, like we could write the offer, it can get accepted, whatever, but I may want to ask them if they're not going to be able to physically be there before we remove that investigation or that inspection contingency. I may want to ask them if there's anything else they want me to video for them or any other rooms they want to see more in detail so that I make sure that they are covered during that time period. Um, we've had a couple people join us. Masiel or Anastasia, do you guys have any questions with regards to virtual tours or video tours or showing properties in general? I'm just soaking up what I was listening to. The smell thing, like I, it's kind of cool, something that 
I wouldn't think to add to my, you know, video walkthrough. I just kind of probably would cringe and hold it in, but that is something <laughs> that they definitely need to know. So now, you know, this is helpful. Yeah. It makes me and aware to make sure that I pinpoint that out. Yeah. And, you know, if I was doing a physical walkthrough with somebody or even like my agent visual inspection, that's not something that I would know because a smell is very subjective. But when you've got somebody that can't be physically at the property and you're doing a video, they're relying on your senses to um, help them see the property. And so if it does have a smell, I do recommend that you disclose that to them. Yep. Anything else? Uh, okay. Nope. All right. <laughs> In addition to that, I'm going to touch on another subject today since we're talking about showing properties. And on the rare occasion that you go through a property and there is a seller present at the property, um, please make sure to keep your conversation with the seller about the weather and the trees and how blue the sky is and not on the transaction itself. Please um, do not ask for personal or confidential information from a seller that you would never otherwise receive, such as um, you know, what price they're willing to take for the house or how fast they need to move, things like that. Um, try to avoid those conversations um, with the sellers just to make sure that you stay on the up and up when it comes to the ethics of being a realtor versus, um, you know, just showing the property. So kind of treat them like they're not there. Um, if they happen to, you know, start having a conversation with you and it's they're leading into those type of conversations, I would just re-divert and just say, oh, thank you for the information. If I have any further questions or, you know, have any other details regarding the price or um, regarding timeframes, I'll make sure to, to run it by your agent before I ask any or before we drop the offer. So just kind of run it back through their agent um, and re-divert them back to the agent. Uh, it's okay to, you know, talk to them about their cute dog that's running around or their vicious dog that's in the garage or, um, you know, I don't know. I think it would be okay to probably ask them if they enjoy the neighborhood, but that could be a gray area too. So just be careful when having conversations with sellers. And on the same note, if you have a listing, please advise your sellers not to be present during the listing, uh, any showings, so that you don't run into any sticky situations with other agents. So just advise your sellers that they need to exit the property and be gone when there are people viewing that property. So there's no gray area. And in addition to that, I would also advise your sellers to, if they do happen to run into any buyers or buyer's agents, that they make sure that they do not talk about the price or comparables or time frames or why they're selling any ammunition that may change the way a buyer writes an offer that they make sure they stay very tight lipped regarding those items. Does anybody have any additional questions regarding showings in person, virtual, video? Moss, y'all unmuted and then muted again. Well, I mean, because I, I was thinking like, I mean, when we are talking to the agents about you know, why they need to sell or, or whatnot. And we, you know, tell them the time frame. I mean, they're working with us then, but I'm just wondering how that's different from, I guess, just having that information if, you know. Yes. Well, I guess it would be a little different also if the seller starts or if our sellers start talking. Yes. And giving right. up more info. Giving more info. So if you... Right. The second that you know that the seller is super motivated, like, oh, we need to get this property sold as soon as possible because we have another house that we're moving into and we're already in contract on it. Now, oh, not only did we just learn that we need a quick close of escrow, but we learned the seller might be super motivated. There's no other offers. They might take something significantly lower than what they're asking in order to like get the sale done. So it might be different, right? If we didn't know when we just talk with the agent and say, hey, so what's their time frame?" And they might be like, oh, well, they're open to a shorter close of escrow, right? That's different than, oh my gosh, we've got to get this property sold, right? So the way that agent might distribute that information might be different than what you would hear from a seller. So we try to 
And in all the cases, try to avoid those conversations with the sellers. Got you. Gotcha. <laughs> Very good. Yes. Any other questions? Um, no. All right. I don't think I have any opinion in case you're like, do I hold my phone this way or this way when doing a video walkthrough? I don't think it really matters. Um, I think most of the time I turn mine this way just because it gives a little bigger perspective of what the property looks like. But then sometimes, you know, you're like, oh, look at the really cool chimney. And then you're like trying to catch it all into like one view. So um, where, you know, maybe this way it might show the whole thing. So I don't think there's a wrong way or a right way. You may always ask, hey, when I go do the video for you today, do you want me to shoot it like landscape or do you want me to, you know, shoot it portrait for you? What do you prefer? You may ask them their preference ahead of time. Just so they have that. Um, so, you know, and then oftentimes, like I might go over the information that's in the MLS um, for the client's information, right? So if there's like, Sometimes there's stuff in the private remarks that can be shared with your clients. It's just not fit for public remarks like, oh, they're looking for, you know, a short close of escrow or they've got an assumable loan or it says here they're willing to do a credit for the carpets like that kind of information I'm going to include in the video as well. All righty. Any other questions on doing showings either in person, virtual or video? Do you do um, like open up the, the closets or open up the drawers or open up the, you know, fridge if the fridge is included or I mean. Um, I have a very that, strict rule that I never open a refrigerator during a showing. Um, but yes, absolutely. Your closets, your cabinets. So I would anytime, you know, any room I walk into that has a closet or if there's a hall closet, I'm absolutely going to open it up and be like, oh, here's the hall closet. And there was a closet next to the front door for, you know, coats or whatever. And then here's the bedroom closet. It has closet doors. It doesn't have closet doors. Right. And here's the kind of the general size of it. Right. So I'm going to try to video that and capture that in there. If it's a walk-in closet, if it's just a slide closet. Um, you might open a couple of the kitchen cabinets so they can see how deep those kitchen cabinets are or how tall they are, or if the shelves are adjustable and maybe same thing with the drawers, like open a couple of drawers um, so they can kind of see the size of the drawers or it'll also draw their attention to the number of drawers that are in that kitchen. So make sure you get a good view of both bathrooms and kitchens so they can see what those cabinet layout looks like. Um, and then my rule about fridges, um, you know, I got my license back before the last, um, significant downturn when there was a lot of foreclosed properties and there was a lot of fridges left behind in those foreclosed properties that weren't opened for long periods of time and you would open them and they would be all rotten on the inside and it would make the entire house stink like rotten eggs so since that experience which you know was a long time ago not quite 20 years ago but close <laughs> so um i just have a rule i don't open fridges whether the house is occupied or not. Um, it was just a really bad experience. It happened on multiple occasions. So, um, but you could open the fridge if it was gonna be included or show them the washer and dryer if those were um, gonna be included. And those are things that you should also point out. So if it says, right, that like fridge, washer, dryer convey or shed conveys, like you may wanna make sure that as you're showing them that you point that out, that they're willing to include the fridge and the washer and dryer. And here's the shed that they're willing to include, um, right? So you would show them all those items. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Yeah, absolutely. Anything else before we wrap up for today? Not for me. Plus, not for me. Fabulous. Um, make sure to log your attendance in, it's in the chat. You can click on the attendance link and log link and log your attendance for today. And I appreciate you all joining me and I hope you have a fabulous day.